Hi there, welcome to another episode of the Bonsai Stuff Podcast. Episode 37 for 2023, thank you for tuning in. As always, I love it. You're uh, you're a great crowd. <laughs> no, I do really appreciate everyone that um, that listens to the podcast and stays in touch because it's uh, it's nice and refreshing to know that the bonsai world is so tight. Anyway, in preparing for this podcast, I um, I do put a lot of effort into it. I uh, I think about a lot of what I do and think how can I pass this along or how can you put into words what you do instinctively after a long period of time and. One of the um, the big things that kept bouncing back into my head, and it does it does quite a lot, is the word balance. You know, everything I do with my bonsai is about balance. So I want to dig a bit deeper into that as part of this podcast, and uh, and also just talk about um, the intensive programs that are coming up and running. Very excited about those. They're um, they're brand new on the agenda. I've never done them before. Um, and I've put so much work into them. I want to share it with you. So, uh, and I also want to talk about um, what's going on around the yard at the moment too. Just, uh, just give you an update on, on where things are at, what I'm working on, and, and what I'm planning to work on over the next short period as well to um, hopefully help anyone that's, um, that's in the same sort of climate as, uh, as what I am. So, stick around. This one should be an interesting one. So how do I define balance? Balance in a bonsai for me is close to perfection. That um, that means that when you look at a bonsai, uh, sort of, and this can this doesn't need to be necessarily a um, you know what we'd classify as a finished masterpiece or anything like that. It um, and I'm going to break down some different scenarios of different trees at different stages of their development and how I work on the balance for them. But for me, perfection in a bonsai is about having balance. So as you look at it, you see very much consistent growth across the entire tree. Now, that is that is extremely hard to get right. It's very, very hard. It's very easy to um, let, the, let the tree do what it wants to do, which is, you know, vast majority of times just push everything it's got towards the top of the tree and take it at the expense of what's down low but we want the areas of the tree consistently and to be as healthy across the board so when you look at uh, your lower branches you see nice plump fresh buds growing or you see nice leaf size or needle length is is healthy and consistent and then when you look at the the other areas of the tree you see that as well now balance can be affected by a lot of things so you work on you work on the top to bottom ratios and and getting the the balance correct in that area but you know you might find that the back of the tree doesn't get as much sunlight as what the front of the tree does so therefore you're at a balance front to back side of the tree so look like I said there's so many different so many different angles when it comes to balance that you've got to be very broad with your thinking and that's why I say to get um, to get balance right is to achieve perfection with your tree. And like I said, it's very, very difficult to get. And, you know, even though you might get it right now, in a month's time it might not be there or in a year's time it may not be there because something else changes. You know, the position of the, the sun in the yard suddenly, you know, causes something else to shade the you know, section of your tree so therefore that part of the tree doesn't grow quite as strong. So it's it's very hard and it's got to be something which is – continually in your focus and like I said when I was putting this this podcast together I was thinking about you know let's talk about you know what I'm doing around the yard and then I started looking at what I was doing around the yard and you know talked last last episode about um, foliage mass and you know in a in a buds and and letting light in and stuff like that and, and it's like okay well when I started doing that more throughout the week I thought well, what's the what's the purpose of this too like what are you you know you're trying to keep everything alive on the inside but what's the ultimate goal what what are you really trying to work towards and it was balance balance is so so important when it comes to your bonsai and then you know it sounds really easy you know top to bottom got to have the same strength yep done that's balance tick it off put it on the shelf yep I'll get to that as as the tree gets older that'll naturally happen by itself I'll let you in on a little secret it doesn't just happen by itself it's very hard to to achieve but then when I started thinking about the trees, you know, I've got a few areas where as the foliage has grown, the space between the trees on my benches has got a little bit more compacted because the massive foliage is sort of pushed out. And it's like, well, you know, now these trees that have gone from being, you know, 
having a good separation between them, the foliage is now touching on each of those. So if I don't do anything about it, that means that I'm going to have areas getting shaded, which once they start getting shaded, they start getting weaker. Where do I put them? My benches are full. So then you've got all these other things you've got to work around as well. But the, like I said, the thought that kept coming back to me was this thought of, of balance. And that's all I'm trying to achieve is that even consistency of growth and development over the entirety of my bonsai. And it's um, it's it's not it's not easy. So when I when I come back to thinking about the different scenarios, because not everyone listening to this tree is going to have trees which are, you know, masterpieces or, you know, have been developed over the last 350 years. But they're not not everyone's going to have them where they're just little sticks in pot that have just popped their head up from, from fresh seeds that have been planted. So it's like, okay, well, I've really got to cater for, for everyone and everyone in between. So I just thought, okay, well, let's go through the different scenarios of – of where I would look for balance in the different different stages of development of your of your tree. So let's start with new stock. All right, so I've got a young young seedling. How am I looking for balance on this thing? Like how do I want to ensure that I've got the tree balanced? It really doesn't matter, right? Because it's just a little stick in a pot. Well, no, that's not true because one of the first things that we develop in that first stage of, of development is the is the trunk. And the nabari, but you've also got to have consideration for your branch placement and positioning as well. You know, so if you want to make a smaller tree, you want to tr- still keep those buds that are down low on the on this little whip, little seedling, still active, right? So if everything's pushing towards the top, then the tree will very easily let that part die. But also, we want to balance out the nabari on the tree. When you look at uh, nabari you know, the, the surface roots, the surface spread of roots, you want that to be balanced in itself as well. So how do we achieve that? We achieve that with repotting, with making sure that we're making appropriate cuts to downward growing, you know, we're root grafting if we need to, whatever. But that's that's all part of the, the balancing nature of, of the whip at that very young stage. So even though you're looking at them and they're, they're really, really small and you think there's nothing to it, just let it grow for a period of time, it's not not the case, and that's why I know there's a really common approach to using, you know, bog standard um, bonsai soil that you can buy from, you know, uh, hardware stores or whatever on young seedlings because it doesn't matter; they're just young. My approach is to try and get them as quickly as possible into uh, something which is going to start developing that root system as quickly as possible. You know, I've talked about this before. I'm not going to, not going to go on it again. But, but that's the balance that I'm trying to achieve. Is I'm trying to balance the root structure with the top of the tree as well. You know, if I've got a really nice strong root system down below, then I'm going to have a really nice strong foliage structure and branching structure and trunk structure that I can use to develop my tree somewhere down the track. So, I'm balancing below the soil with what's on top of the soil. So it's not just looking at you know whether the leaf size is the same from top to bottom of the tree. It's like, okay, well, is the root system going to be developed adequately enough for me to balance the structure that I want above the soil surface as well? So this is where this whole this whole balancing sort of, you know, it, it, it keeps going. It never stops, you know. We'll, we'll talk later on about balancing pots with trees and all that sort of stuff too. But anyway, so then we move into the into the second stage, which is, you know, where you've got your, your trunk and you've got your nabari set and then you start working on your branching structure, your primary branching. How does balance work with that? Well, you sure as hell don't want, you know, let's say you're running sacrifice branches down the bottom of the tree, right? And, and you've got a nice top part of the tree and you, you go, okay, well, I'm going to start pruning the top part of the tree but I'm going to let these sacrifice branches really start to push out and, and get some real, you know, significant thickness on those lower branches which is going to therefore allow me to thicken my trunk and whatever else. Sooner or later those branches, sacrifice branches come off and, you know, do you want branches that are going to be kept in that place? Are you you know, uh, using those sacrifice branches to to thicken a branch because it's the lowest branch on the tree. Therefore, you need to keep some foliage in close to that that part of the, the, the trunk as well. 
to do that, you need to balance things out. You know, balance your foliage mass like I talked about last time. You know, make sure that no area is getting shaded too much. Make sure no area is getting too strong in that tree and still encourage and push things to, to, to grow at the bottom. Most important tool that we've got in our arsenal is our, our scissors or our branch cutters because we don't want something to get too strong, we cut it. We want something to get stronger, we don't cut it. Simple. It's a nice simple formula we use and when you've got trees that are in that sort of second phase of developing the primary branches, that's the sort of thing that we can use to make sure that we're getting balance across the tree. You know, you don't want it all to go to one area of the tree. You know, you, you, let's say your trunk's, I don't know, 30, 40 centimetres tall, right? And you've got the nice trunk, grown it in the ground, done whatever you've done with it or you've collected a tree or whatever it is. Okay, how do I get these branches to grow? How do I get balance in there? If you suddenly let everything start to grow, guaranteed those ones up near the top are going to take off and start to really push and start to get the the vast share or the majority share of trees resources. So therefore you've got to make decisions to balance it by cutting that foliage at the top part of the tree to then push resources down to those lower areas and allow them to get going. And that's how, even though when you look at the tree, you might say, well, it's not balanced because the lower branches are actually longer than what the top branches are, but the strength that's going to them becomes balanced. And that's the really, really super important part of, of balance at that stage. The next stage of development we've got is we've, we're working on the secondary branching. So we've got our primary branches, we're starting to work on our secondary branches and this is where pruning, you know, the use of your, your sharp tools in your, in your kit becomes super important and this is where that balancing gets so difficult, so, so difficult. The earlier phases you don't, you know, you think about that golden rule of one to two where one branch turns into two and then those two branches turn into four and then four turns into eight. When you're doing the primary branches, there's not many branches floating around, okay? So there's not much foliage. The ramification really hasn't started that process. So your root structure doesn't have a hell of a lot to, to push up to feed. And it's very forgiving. This is where I see a hell of a lot, a lot of times where, you know, the trees are in pretty, pretty average soil. They're being fed. They're doing okay. They're looking good. It's like, yeah, well, why would I want to, why would I want to change the soil mix? It's, you know, I know what you're saying, but I don't need to. Look how healthy my tree is. It's doing really good. And that's great until that foliage mass starts to double every year. You know, 10 branches becomes 20, 20 becomes 40, 40 becomes 80. So by the time you're getting to this, this third, what I consider the third phase of de development, which is the, the secondary branches, if your root system isn't perfectly in tune with what's happening above the above the soil then and it's not in balance then there's no way you're going to get to that point 40 branches might turn into 42 you know because some will grow some will die you know your tree sort of starts to get on that treadmill of life and just go well i'm just treading water now i'm not i'm not going anywhere i'm not getting better but i'm not getting worse so i'm sort of like stagnating with what i'm doing because the limited space i've got for my roots really can't do much more than what it's doing now so you know, unless you're unless you're really aggressively pushing that uh, that that significant balance between below and above the soil level, then you're not going to get not going to get too far too far down the track. So let's say you've got you know you you make the transition, you go to a nicer soil, you you really start pumping out those roots, you really start getting on top where your root system's strong enough now to do whatever the hell it is that you want to do with the top of the tree. You start getting growth. And then you've got to really start to manage it. And this is where, you know, you've got to get the balance correct. And that means doing things like, you know, when you're going through at this time of the year, you know, mid, mid spring thereabouts, and you're doing a bit of your, your spring prune, you're looking at it and going, okay, strong areas, I'm going to cut, I'm going to cut you back. You know, I've got to get this sorted now because, you know, if all the branches look pretty much the same, you go through and you're pretty aggressive coming back to the first pair of leaves. If it's a pair or if it's alternate leaves maybe the second or third leaf you know you start doing all that clip and grow stuff that we've talked about then you look at the finer ones and it's so easy as I've said many times to, to just cut everything back to that first pair but this is where the balancing act starts to work and you're not balancing necessarily top to bottom you're balancing branch strength across the entire tree all right, so I'll, I'll, I'll say that again. You're not balancing the top to bottom growth on the tree, so lower branches to top branches. You're balancing the branch growth across the whole tree. So if you've got weaker little buds that have just started to push out and just started to get their go, start to get their turn, 
and they've just started. Don't don't go in and, and take them all out at this stage of development of the tree. This is the you know you're still developing your secondary branches stage. Let them continue to grow. Cut all the big stuff. Push resources to those weaker ones. Let them start to grow. Then come back in a couple of weeks' time when they've got stronger. Cut them back, and then you'll find there's some more little ones that have just started to grow. Let them get their turn. Start to push out, and then come in and cut them. So, while it's really easy to go through with a pair of scissors and go, you know, I've got. 450 trees that I've got to prune so I'm doing it once the far better way to do it is bring it in do the prune analyze the strength of the tree do that you know partial you know leaf or foliage mass reduction was talked about last week let some sunlight in there let those weaker areas continue to grow try and really get that balancing of the resources across the entire tree then come back in another couple of weeks later on, have a look at it, reassess. Do I need to do anything? Yes, I'll cut it. No, I don't. Put it back on the bench. Don't just go into automatic mode and say, all right, it's time to cut. You've really got to you've got to break it back a lot more and you've got to think about exactly what it is that you're doing. And that's where you link this all with with fertilizing your trees, with with watering your trees, with you know, the position of your trees, all that stuff, all that 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 pushing of resources that we want at this time of year that we can really harness during spring, it all comes down to to balance. You know, you've got to get that balancing act right with your with your tree. Otherwise, you know, you you sort of get through the year, get to summer and go, well, you know what, I read something that said pinch out the new growth. I pinched out the new growth and nothing's happened. Like I'm 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 exactly where I was last year. Nothing's happening and this is where that inconsistency or approach starts to happen, the chop and change. You know, that didn't work last year, so now I'm going to do this. All right, so that didn't work, now I'm going to do this. All right, someone else said that and I, I like what they've they've done on their, their tree, so I'm going to do exactly that. I think that if you can break it back to the real fundamentals and start working your way through block by block by block, as always, you know the most important part that I say of the tree is the root system. If you start with that root system and you start building the blocks on that, and if you've done the, if you've changed your soil, if you've, you've you're in a nice pumice base mix, then you can start to start to add the other pieces of the puzzle together. Start working with your your balancing act on the foliage, front to back, top to bottom, outside to inner areas of the tree. Balance it out correctly by by pruning the strong and leaving the weak push resources to that area naturally through the tree balance it out with your fertilizing as well try and you know replace or replenish what the tree's been using throughout the throughout the system watch your watering you know sorry i'm, I'm rambling on i know I, I can feel myself rambling on about it now I'm a, if you could just um i should have videoed this one because my hands are going a million miles an hour waving and and screaming and shouting <laughs> but but it's really important like i said this is the this is the part this balancing act is what as I was putting this podcast as I was thinking about this podcast the light bulb goes on and it just said to me you know it it's all about balance you know if you can get the balance right then you know you're more than halfway there and it's it's balanced right every stage so the last last part which is when you get to um, you know your ramification stage of your tree you've got your your trunk you've got your nabari you've got your primary branches you've got your secondary branches and you're purely just going for for ramification for twiggy branching it's actually it's actually probably the easiest stage i find to get balance right because if you've done all the hard work along the way in those other stages of development and you've really got the tree so now it's feeding things nicely then you know it the, the the balancing becomes a little bit easier. Things like you know candle breaking on your you know your pine type species really self sort of starts to help. You know having the having the resources get pushed to those weaker buds by getting the the strongest ones and breaking the tips off them and pushing resources down to those weaker ones, or you know seeing you know the first buds that push out on your maples and going through and pruning all of those or pinching those out nice and early so then it keeps pushing down to those weaker ones and then they start to open and you do the same thing it keeps going to the weaker ones and weaker ones and weaker ones and that's i find that this is even though it's a hell of a lot of work because you've got um so many branches on the tree and you know that one to two doubling every year it it, it really does stack up and you, you've got a hell of a lot of it there and then that that leaf or the foliage mass um, 
it has to be managed a lot more frequently because you've got so many leaves, you've got so much happening in those areas that you really need to make sure that you're getting sunlight to those inner areas at this this early or early to mid part of, of spring to make sure that you're you're able to achieve what you want to achieve throughout the, in, the entire period. So I find that, that that balancing act becomes a lot easier and by by this stage of ramification you're, you're a lot of years down the track with the tree anyway. It might be something that you've just bought and it might not be. But if you've developed it all the way through then you know about your positioning of your tree. You've got to, you've got to get it rotated throughout the year so the front's getting as much sun as what the back is and the sides and inner areas and blah, blah, blah. That, anyway. Hopefully you um, you can pick up from my tone with this one that it, it is something that you know, if you, you just have in the back of your head every time you walk around to your trees or every time you start working on them, start thinking about balance, you know, whether it's balancing out the amount of sunlight that the tree gets when you're wiring your tree to make sure those inner areas are getting it, make sure that, you know, no areas become too dense, uh, make sure that you know you're, you're rotating your trees on your bench make sure they're not jammed in there too close together and that's a really common one like I said for me as well uh, it's really common that um, you uh, you feel it at the moment where things sort of touch on sides or the back of the trees sort of push into the back of a benching you know that's pushing in front of them or trees at the back bench grow over the, the, the trees on the on the lower bench at the front or Trees in the garden grow and they cover in shade areas where they weren't shaded, you know, a couple of weeks ago. It's that's all stuff that we need to you need to work on, you need to get right now because it's the um it's the it's the it's the magic bullet balance. If you keep working on that part of um, the development with your trees and balancing it out, then uh, you're on the right path. You're um you're gonna get there. Sorry about that. <laughs> I felt like a bit of a rant that one, but um, but it's uh, it's something that I do get do get really passionate about because I think of um, I think of this podcast as being a um, a tool or a facility to help improve bonsai as far as the sun will reach around this globe, and and if um, if that that little uh, that little rant from me. Um, sort of helps anybody well then that's that's job done for the for the podcast <laughs> thanks for uh, thanks for entertaining me entertaining me on that one and listening in anyway exciting times um i've got uh, coming up my very first uh, intensives classes now for a long time i've done workshops and i've done classes and i've done everything in between and loved it done lots of presentations and you know all around all around lots of different lots of different clubs lots of different facilities until recently, I've sort of always felt that um, there's just been something more that I could do, something more which would give, um, I don't know, greater depth to, to what I can offer. And that's where, that's where these intensives popped up. You know, I know a lot of people around the world do the intensives and, and that's, you know, that's cool. I, it, but for me, it was a way I thought about how I could not just have, you know, an extended period of time where I can sit and make beautiful trees with people and have people go home and say, wow, that was really nice. You know, I got to, got to sit around and just work on trees and, and be in the moment for, for a longer period of time, which is great. Like that's, that's awesome. But with it, I really wanted to have it where I could offer so many different components. Normally, so normally when I do a class, it's, you know, sort of around three hours and in three hours, you you maybe you educate and talk for a you know hour and a half thereabouts, and it's sort of an hour and a half of working on trees, and then bingo bango, you you're done, get out. And it never sort of felt um, completely satisfying with what I was what I was doing from my perspective, because oh, there's so much more to this. Like, there's so much more to talk about than than just the nitty gritty of of the species or the topic that we're we're covering off on, or the time of the season of the year or whatever it is. So anyway, I started thinking, okay, well, what would I throw into an intensive? And and like I said, I haven't, um, I haven't. <laughs> part of what I do is I don't, um, I don't listen to other podcasts. I don't watch 
uh, YouTube on on Bonsai. I don't uh, I don't follow a lot of people on in the in the Bonsai world on social media. I try and have my thoughts be as um, as pure as I possibly can, because it's not the sort of thing that I want to unintentionally um, take up anyone else's thoughts and and pass them on as my own. I want I always wanted this to be be me 110 percent but just just through and through you know what you see is what you get and um and if that resonates with you then yep you're my people we're on so with these intensives i thought well what would i really want to be shown like what would i what would i want to get out of this you know what i'd I'd love to you know let's say it's on um you know the first one i'm doing is on on pines single flush pines and and cedars what would i want to get out of that Yep, sure, I'd want to know the nitty-gritty of, of dealing with those species at this time of the year plus some in-depth stuff about what to expect later on and how to make them better and stronger and all that stuff that goes with it, like every every single component of that. But then it's like, okay, well, what else would you want to get out of it for an intensive, you know, and how long would it need to run for? Is an intensive one day? Is it, you know, sort of split over two weeks? Like where do you get the most bang for your buck? And that's why I thought, well, let's make it a, a two-day scenario, generally weekends time permitting so a Saturday Sunday which means that you know people could sort of have buy-in run for long enough before they get tired go home maybe at the end of the day have a you know have a beer or wine or cup of tea or whatever it is that you you fancy and just sit down and chew the fat for for a little bit after the the intensive's over and sort of absorb as much bonsai as you could and that's where from my time when I studied in Japan those were the times that I found really special. So I thought I really want that sort of an atmosphere where it's just bonsai, 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 you know, and you, you eat, breathe and, and live it. You're, for that short period of time, that is that is all you are. And so I thought, okay, that's the, that's the environment that I want to create and that's what I'm going to do. And I want it to be structured. Like I'm a highly structured person, you know, so there's an agenda. Okay, what's on the agenda? All right, what else do you want to get out of it? And then I suddenly broke it back for myself and I thought, well, I really want – I want more on the design side. Like, how do you, you know? It's it's great to talk horticultural stuff, and and that's that's really really super important. That's got to be sort of you know knuckled in deep to everybody. That the horticultural stuff's really important, but the design side, like you know, that's the part where I thought you know I can we can really dig deep into that and spend a lot of time talking about flow and structure and you know and and movement of of the tree and. And how do you achieve that and how do you not achieve that and what should you look for and not go for cookie-cutter approaches to, to design but to definitely delve into it where it's it's a key component of an intensive before you start um, tearing into, you know, cutting branches off and stuff like that. Why are you cutting them off? What are you trying to achieve? Like think about, you know, things like negative space and, and all that. So that's a, that's a key component of, the, of it as well as other things like, your technical skills that you want to achieve, be it, you know, things like wiring or major bending, raffia and that sort of stuff. How do you learn that stuff? You can jump on, you know, YouTube and, you know, watch it, but is is that the right way to do it? Like you, I, for me it's always been about trusting the source that I'm getting it from and seeing the results of it over a long period of time. You know, not just looking at, okay, well, this is how I bend a tree, you know, in the shape of a – you know, upside down you, great. Is is the tree going to survive? <laughs> How do I know it's going to survive? Like where's where's the, that you've done that sort of thing and what's the result of it? Like what should I expect from from doing this sort of thing with my tree? So I really want that to be part of the, the intensive as well, that you're going to get technical skills, like take home technical stuff. You're going to take home solid foundation in in horticultural information about the particular species that we're going to be working on but it's also that in-depth design and and suddenly delving a lot deeper into the um the background of of how to build beautiful bonsai time over time and you know going into to pot selection and you know positioning in the pot and how to get through you know all those different phases of coming out of a tub into a to bonsai pot and i reckon that um you know, I'm really excited about these intensives, and I think that they're going to be they're going to be great. And and being over a weekend too, it makes it far more open and available for people from long distances to to come. You know, the the first one's got people travelling from regional Victoria, which is it's bloody it's awesome. I love it that you know a three hour or you know or two hour workshop or whatever it is 
it's sort of not long enough to to sort of warrant that you know big long trek. But doing it over a couple of days and staying being able to stay locally as well, you know, it's it's got an awesome availability of of, of you know that that being able to to get involved with people at a at a greater distance, which I'm really excited for. So that's that's definitely something I'm pumped about. So around the yard at the moment, um, a section that uh, that I do like talking about, and it seems to resonate with um, with people as a nice little promptance to what's what's going on. But you know, spring for us in Melbourne, Australia is um, is one of those times where we go from you know quite warm, beautiful, sunny, blue sky, no wind, to um, a couple of days later, it's pouring, it's cold, it's you know, it's the opposite end of the scale. Where um, I, I know I. I, I talk about it a lot with being careful with watering, but it's it's so true uh, at the moment what to um, what to expect with watering your trees. It's very difficult, and uh, it can swing so fast that you know, for instance, had a day the other day where it was was cooler, but it was windy, and I still had to water twice in one day, even though the temperatures weren't up and it was you know chilly to go outside. Everything dried out pretty quickly, and you've also got to keep in mind that it's not how you feel it's about how much water the tree's taking up and if the trees are in that growing period they're naturally going to take up more water than when they're in a state of dormancy so just because it's cold doesn't mean they're not going to be growing so just keep an eye on the watering side of things really really tough and um, also feeding you know been through done another round of filling tea bags left right and center and putting them out on the trees. Some trees got the fertilizer bags replaced. Other trees had the fertilizer bags added to them, depending on the size of the pot. But um, yeah, just a gentle reminder that uh, it is a really, it's a good time to be feeding your trees. And if you've got, for me, I've got trees which are in that refinement stage where I may not have fertilized them initially in the first round of feeding when they had aggressively grown, but because I've been through and pinched out a hell of a lot of their growth, they're not pushing new growth anymore and I'm not too fussed about leaf size either because they seem to be they're, – they're hardening off and the leaves are getting that um, that darker olive, more olive colour. So they've been given their first feed for the season. There's a few trees that haven't but there are, um, are some that have. And just a reminder as always, if you're decandling your black pines, then get on the feed. Make sure you're, um, you're powering that into them at the moment to build up their strength. I've noticed with um, this year with my pines, my black pines specifically, there's um, there's a lot of new growth, a lot of back budding this year. Last year we had a uh, cooler, a cooler summer, more humid summer down here, and the growth was okay. It was um, possibly not as aggressive last year as what I've found it to be this year, which is great. So I'm really trying to harness that at this point in time. And plow the food into them, because I'm really expecting a um, a good uh, a good result when I decant all these things in uh, in coming months. But that's um, that's that's a whole another podcast. So anyway, reminder that um, that feeding also about to um, as you know as I just talked about with the um, with the intensives about to start. I'm also getting ready in the very near future to start the candle cutting process on uh, on some of my trees my radiatas and and scots pines to um to get that growth pushed back in and and stop it from from getting out far too long from what it is so that's all that's all about to happen in the um in the near future but at this stage a lot of what i'm doing is as i talked about last week was um is that that foliage density i'm really really mindful of that at the moment and trying to keep an eye on uh, a few of the natives because that's starting to um starting to, Australian native trees are starting to um to push growth quite aggressively and and i've got to make sure that i uh, i manage that as well while still allowing it to um to to push a little bit to get some root growth and start taking it back that's um that's one thing that I'm I'm really mindful of at the uh, at the present time. But yeah, really working on that leaf density, foliage density of my deciduous to make sure that they're not getting too um too thick and dense on the outer areas to keep the inner areas getting that that sun and air coming in there. So lots of lots of pruning, also removing um, old flowers on on azalea, 
it's um before they start turning to seed, so starting to get some um, some new growth coming in those areas as well. So it's been um, been a busy time, and as always, I seem to be constantly weeding trees, but that um, that just never seems to stop. But I suppose that goes with um, goes with the nature of having so many trees. But it's uh, it's definitely busy times around the yard. But it's it's really at the moment focusing on on pruning and and feeding the trees and making sure that I stay up with that side of it and not letting things slip past me too quickly. That brings us to the end of the podcast. Thanks for sticking around. And please keep that word balance in the back of your head whenever you're um, you're looking at your trees, whenever you're walking around them, just think of that word balance. Don't um don't always necessarily look for the the silhouette of your tree and you know, because they can look nice with leaves on them. Really try and have a look in deep into the tree, you know, spread those leaves apart and have a look in there and look at the branch structure and see am I balancing the growth on this thing or is it all just coming to the outside? How does it look front to back? How does it look bottom to top? Is everything balanced with regard to the branch thickness sizing, you know, or is it too thick at the top of the tree? Do I need to prune some of that stuff off and therefore, you know, allow some of the bottom stuff to to elongate, to sacrifice, to thicken up, to, to get the balance that you want with the tree because... It's one of the most, if not the most important thing that you've got to try and achieve with your bonsai. And as I was saying, at, that's at every development of the tree. Not just don't don't leave balance to the to the pointy end of the tree of, of the tree's life as a bonsai. Don't wait till that ramification stage to try and get balance. Try and push balance from day one, and and push the the balance of the root structure as well. You know, think about that. It's Clearly, too late now for um, for a lot of the trees, the exotics in my yard to to think about the root system. But you know, it can be something that you can work towards for next year as well. You know, think about uh, how you can improve that root structure to get that that greater strength. Because you know, a rule of one to two, you know, one branch turns into two every year. Doesn't sound like much, but your foliage mass doubles every single year on the tree got to have the balance with the root system to be able to achieve that you know round and round we go on the merry-go-round thinking about how we're going to develop our bonsai but it is um it is super important anyway also like i said i'm um, i'm super pumped about the 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 uh, intensives that i'm running and I'm, I'm looking forward to giving some feedback about that too somewhere down the track and how they've how they've run but as always, make sure that you're um, you're keeping an eye out for your trees. Spring, great time for pests, great time for weeds, great time for all that troublesome stuff that happens around the yard. So just be um, be mindful of it and be ready for it and be aware of it. And and um, please just watch out for your watering because, um, like I said, it catches everyone, catches me, catches everyone off guard. So just um, just do the best you possibly can. And as always, until next time, happy bonsai. <laughs>